Hello everyone, our project is called Plate Loader, a new HTML widget for machine evolution visualization. This is our team. We required the use of R because our study involved many play files. Each one of them is associated to some 3D geometry and we needed to use R in order to produce some interactive 3D visualization to observe such geometries. Some basic context about us. Our team is part of the Stand-Up Research Project. Some of its main objectives are helping the prevention of diabetic food ulcers, evaluate ulcer status during its treatment, contribute to the healing of diabetic food ulcer. Also, it's important to note that in order to adapt the medical treatment, ulcer and wound therapeutic follow-up involve periodic visual examination to monitor the evolution of the wound shape and color of the tissues. This means that for for our playloader package, its main objective was to produce some interactive 3D visualization where we could load many 3D geometries and get a sense of the evolution from one geometry into the other one. So how did we generate our play files? Many patients were recruited. Uh, these patients suffer from diabetic foot ulcers and when they visited the hospital, a smartphone camera plugged to a thermal apparatus was used to scan their wound. Then from these two images a 3D model was created and we acquired a thermal model of the wound and a non-thermal model. So with respect to the problem that I just mentioned, we first tackled such issue using RGL because it's our most, most popular 3D graphic library. However, it wasn't able to solve our problem. This is because RGL is a great tool for creating 3D plots in R, but not for loading complex geometries. Therefore, the Playloader package was created to address the limitations of RGL that we encountered in our project. So what, what is Playloader? It's a widget. It was created via the HTML widgets package. It's also a wrapper of JavaScript's most complete 3D library, 3DS in order to use it directly from R. It allows for the creation of 3GS scenes via loading play files into them. Here's an example of a 3GS scene. I can rotate this and interact with it. It's quite a powerful video. Now with respect to some RGL limitations, I'm going to mention how our solution, that is the playloader package, was able to solve it. So, one advantage of the Playloader package over RGL is the likely support for translucent meshes. If you were to include some heavy or complex translucent geometry into an RGL scene, then this scene becomes quite laggy as you try to interact with it. So, sometimes it even becomes unusable. However, if translucent graphics are loaded via the Playloader package, then the scene has no lag whatsoever. Here's an example. In this RGL scene, we are loading two geometries from some patient. One is translucent, and as I try to interact with it, it's already lagging, you can see. But now, I load the same scenes, that is the same geometries, but now we have apply loader package, and we can see there is no lag. Another advantage of the Playloader package over RGL is a faster rendering of the seeds. If you use RGL in Quarto or R Markdown files, then the rendering time increases. This also makes that the HTML output generated, uh, these pages have very slow loading. However, Playloader significantly reduces rendering time and HTML output size 20 kilobytes. As an example, for the previous scenes that I showed, if we were to simply load the RGL in C into some quarto document and also isolate it, the playloader equivalent in some quarto document, and then we can compare its rendering time, and we we got that the rendering time decreased from 50 seconds using RGL to 10 seconds using playloader. Also, the size of the output HTML page approximately shrank from 
18,000 kilobytes to 10 kilobytes, producing also a faster page load. And lastly, another playloader advantage of RGL is greater user interactivity. Despite the fact that RGL has some JavaScript methods for manipulating its graphics, it seems, uh, their official documentation is quite poor. And in the case of playloader, it seems a tricky as a seems, so they, they can also be customized uh, with the default tools of the PDF library. And that is the most complete JavaScript to the graphics library in existence. Now, how do we create such a scenes? This is with the use of the playloader function from the playloader package. Here I'm going to show an example of that. This is a this is the most basic form of how to create a scene using this function. The first argument adds is where are the the play files located, the, the play files that you want to load. Then the second argument I will explain later on, and then an ID that we can set to the scene. This could be the output of this function. This is a play file that was loaded. Now, respect to the local files argument that I mentioned, uh, we have to set it to false if the play file that we want to load is located in some parent folder with respect to the document where we are using the play loader function. So if we were to use such, such function in this document index.qmd, say we want to load the this play file, in this case we have to go to a parent folder, folder X, and then access this play file. So in such case, local files should be set to false. Otherwise, uh, for example, in a scenario like this, uh, you have to set it to true. This, this is because the output that this document produces, that is an index.html page, if you simply open such document in the in the browser, then the, the scenes, sorry, the graphics won't be displayed because of some security protocols of the, of the browsers. But we can overcome that if we load such HTML document via local server and you can do that with this function from the server package. In this example we are loading some play files from some parent folder with respect to the document where the play loader function is being used but the output is really the same. We change the ID because it should be unique by a scene and as we can see we can load more than one uh, play file. Now, more arguments of, the, of this function. We are simply going to load some geometries. We are, again, we are also changing the ID. And now, let us focus in the argument is wireframe. We are setting is wireframe true to the first geometry loaded and false to the second one. In this case, is transparent equals to true. Makes it so that both geometries are going to be transparent. And over here with opacity, we're setting an opacity 1 to the first geometry and 0 0.5 to the second one. And this is the outcome. We can see one of these meshes is in wireframe form, this one, and the other one is translucent. Other arguments that we have for this function is the toggle meshes argument. In particular, the show evolution argument that we're going to set it to false and some labels for some buttons for that will toggle the visibility of meshes. In this case, this is the output, and as I click on these buttons, the visibility of the geometries is being toggled. And in the text in these buttons, um, is the date for when such a wound was scanned. Now, I'm going to change, to change only the parameter show evolution. Now, I will set it to true, but in order to, for it to work, I will also need the parameter is transparent to be true because now some mesh evolution is going to be displayed. This is a wound corresponding to the date over here, and as I change the value in this slider, the opacity of such mesh will change from 1 to 0 in order to obtain 
in this value the mesh corresponding to this other date. Now, the bottom folder customizability of the playload RSC. It was it it with respect to the camera and controls. Camera, we can think of it as which is the perspective from we are looking for. We're looking at at the scene and controls. It's what allows us this rotation and zooming, for example. Uh, that we can do, do manually with the mouse. First, we're going to set a set a problem. Say I want to load this geometry in a specific point, in a specific perspective, maybe looking like this or perhaps like this. Then, as I mentioned, its ID will be useful. I'm going to open the the browser console, pressing Control Shift J, and I am going to use the ID of such a scene in order to access some of its properties. In this case, for this scene, its element ID is model 4, so I type window model 4, and this variable is an object, and we have control now of the camera and controls of this scene. So, say I want to access its camera, its properties are these ones animations, children position for example so I change position of the camera its x value to be a hundred I click enter and the machine also gets updated similarly with controls the controls of this scene we can see some of its properties over here and we can also change them in this case this camera object this is its JavaScript representation and it's our equivalent equivalent would be this next list. Similarly, for the controls, this would be its JavaScript representation. It's got more parameters, not only, sorry, more properties, not only target. And its R equivalent would be this next list. So now, if we want to, to get a specific perspective when the geometry is loaded, we only need to specify the position of the camera the value add of the camera and the value target of controls. You can actually get the current values of a geometry by using the get current perspective. Its argument is simply the ID of the scene that we are manipulating. And here we obtain the position of the camera as an it's in R form, the add value and the target controls. So if we set this as we do over here in this part camera position up and control target we can change the perspective that our geometry will be shown once the scene is loaded now the geometry looks like this when before it used like this whenever it was loaded and you can do that for all the properties of camera controls so in conclusion the play loader packages a Great tool for loading complex geometries, store display files into a website, rendering translucent geometries in a 3D scene, reducing a scene's rendering time, producing also faster page loading, and creating interactive 3D scenes with diverse tools for user interaction, thanks to the 3GS library. This is a repository of this package, and that's it. Thank you.